Um, roll call, please. Council Member Burnworth? Here. Council Member Mendoza? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Tucker? Here. And Council Member Obisa Martinez and Mayor Alvarado are on the floor. Okay, please stand for the pledge of allegiance. All right, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adjustments to the agenda? There are no adjustments to the agenda at this time. Okay. Um, City Attorney reports on closed session action. Yes, Council met in closed session, discussed one item of anticipated litigation. <clears throat> Direction was given to Council. The Council discussed uh, Superior Court Case ECU 003168, direction given to Council. The Council dis or discussed ECU 003274, direction was given to Council. Also case ECU 003274, and direction was given to Council. The council also discussed Areola versus City of Imperial, and direction was given to council. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you. Um, public comment. There is a time of limit of three minutes for anyone wishing to address the city council on these matters. Matters not apparent on the agenda, if you wish to address the city council concerning any item within the city's jurisdiction, please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the mayor at that time time state your name and address for the record the mayor reserves the right to place the time limit of three minutes on each person's presentation it is requested that longer presentations be submitted to the city clerk's office in writing 48 hours before the meeting is there anybody has a public comment i'm seeing none do we have any written no public comment via email okay Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next up is A, presentations. Um, proclamation, presentation for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Okay, I'll read the proclamation. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. October is nationally recognized as Breast Cancer Awareness Month and raises awareness and education about breast health and breast cancer which is the second leading cause of cancer death in women in the United States both men and women should be aware that age genetics and family history are factors that can contribute to the risk of developing this disease and and, and individuals may help reduce their risk through regular exams and mammograms which are vital to detecting breast cancer early and Whereas the Imperial Police Department and several hundred par partner agencies throughout the world are participating in the Pink Patch Project by wearing pink uniform patches and pins the entire month of October to raise attention to the fight against breast cancer and supporting research organizations in this combating this disease. And whereas as we join the celebration of survivorship, we honor those who have dedicated their lives to research, education, and treatments. As we acknowledge, acknowledge those women and men who have lost their courageous battles with breast cancer. And now, therefore, I'm Mayor James Tucker on behalf, Mayor Pro Tem, sorry about that. Mayor James Tucker on behalf of the City of Imperial do hereby proclaim the month of October 2024 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the city of Imperial. Bless you. Bless you. Okay. Oh, there you go. Sorry about that. Thank you very much. May I say a few words? Yes. Thank you. Um, my name is Helen Palomino. I am the CEO of the Cancer Resource Center of the Desert. We've been here in the Imperial Valley since 2006, have served over 3,400 cancer patients. And with me today is my assistant director, Lourdes Murcia, and she has some local statistics that you may be interested in. And uh, right before she goes into that, I do want to indicate, as I listen to the proclamation, 
our agency, which is very small, but we have a, a lot of influence and activity within research itself. Uh, we've just concluded a, a research study funded by the California Breast Cancer Research Program, which comes uh, funded out of the UC Regents, which is the Office of the President of the UC System. We are partnered with UCSD School of Medicine and CRCD, working at El Centro Regional Medical Center. We just concluded a three-year project looking at women's health issues with breast cancer. So women going through breast cancer and all of the different issues they encounter, fertility preservation, birth control, looking at uh, side effects for hot flashes and sexual health. So we worked with the medical team at, uh, at the oncology center, working with women with breast cancer. And it was a very positive approach to identifying their needs as they go through their treatment, uh, beginning, during, and after. So, I just wanted to point that out because that's in your proclamation about research. It's not about medication research, but it's social behavioral research that we're involved in. And that is happening here. And we've already been published once in the uh, Journal of, Cl of Clinical Trials because of the protocols. So I just thought you should know. Lourdes, you can share our, our stats. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share some of the statistics of the last year from October 23 to the present, October 2024. The number of patients that the Cancer Resource Center has served in Imperial County. Um, so far, we've served the last year 744 patients, included, including children, uh, women, and, and men. Um, out of those 744, 236 are the cancer patients who have been diagnosed with breast cancer. And out of those 236, 16 of them suffer or have been diagnosed with stage four, which is a terminal staging in cancer. Um, but also some statistics as to financial support that we provided. And we've received also much support from local agencies, police department, um, raising funds for, for our community, for the for cancer patients. So far, we've served um, in non-medical financial assistance, which includes to cover, help them cover financial barriers such as rental assistance, uh, utilities, um, it could be a um, you know, number of, of financial um, bills. It's 950. I'm sorry, 957,532, um, so close to a million. And then with regards to medical expense relief, that involves any co-pay assistance um, if the patient comes into a, for, to, our, to our agency to assist them with insurance coverage um, or medical bills. So far, we have uh, covered $893,602. So thank you very much for inviting us and thinking of our agency. Thank you. And if we could meet over here to take pictures real quick. So, uh, let Olivia. No, you take it. What's that? You go in. <laughs> take the proclamation. <laughs> James. You have signed it. He already signed it. I already it. signed it. You did not sign it. Oh. So it's the other one then? That's his friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there He's got to give him the prop. It's for them. <laughs> 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 Thank you, guys. I was wondering. Okay. I have a paper here somewhere. Oh, there it is. All right. Um, another pro proclamation. Um, City of Imperial, Hispanic Heritage Month. Hispanic and Latino Americans have enriched our nation with their contributions to arts, science, government, military, and every sector of society. And whereas 
The vibrant heritage of Hispanic and Latino communities is woven into the cultural fabric of our city, bringing vitality, innovation, and richness. And whereas celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month fosters an inclusive environment that appreciates the diversity of multiculturalism of our community and whereas it is the essential to honor and recognize the significant role and achievement of Hispanic and Latino American and to promote a culture of understanding and respect. Now, therefore, I Mayor Pro Tim James Tucker on behalf of the city of City Council do hereby proclaim September 15th to October 15, 2024 as Hispanic Heritage Month in the city of Imperial. Uh, passed and adopted the 16th day of October 2024 at a regular meeting of the city Imperial City Council and I'd like to welcome IBC Chicano Studies instructor Miguel Chavez. Yes, thank you speaking. sir. A uh, few words? Yes sir. So I would just like to thank uh, the city council for recognizing the hard work that our students have been committed to um, from the beginning of the semester, we have been involved in organizing three major events. Um, one of our missions is to really uh, engage the community. We want to make sure that the community is aware of the resources that we have available to them on campus, as well as you know, enriching the community with our culture and our heritage. So on behalf of my students and myself, we all, uh, sincerely thank you. Uh, we recognize this as a really high, as a high esteem uh, recognition, and we're I'm we are all really grateful for the recognition. So. All right, all thank right. you. <laughs> Would you like to say something? Yeah. Um, I think that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been here. I didn't know what to expect, so I'm a bit underdressed, but. Um, it's been a really good experience. I've gotten to meet a lot of people. I've gotten to know a lot about the history and the culture. And um, I feel really proud about the community that he has helped build. So I'm glad this is happening. All right. Thank you. Very good. Okay. If we'll meet over here so we can get the photo. With my papers. This yeah. <laughs> Okay, next up is content, consent agenda. All items appearing under the consent agenda will be acted upon by the city council with one motion without discussion should any council member or other persons request that an item be considered. Separately, the item will then be taken up at the time as determined by the mayor. Make a motion to approve. Second. I got a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries three zero. All right. Up next, C. Action item. Discussion action approved, disapproved. C1. Operational agreement between Sure Helpline and the Imperial Police Department. Presenter, Aaron Real. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tim Tucker and Council. The, this is a renewal of an agreement that the police department has with the uh, Sure Helpline, who helps us with uh, victims' assistance in violent crimes involving sexual assault, and then we're requesting that the MOU with your Sure Helpline be renewed. I make a motion to approve. Second it. I got a motion and a second. Please vote. 
Motion carries 3-0. All right. Next up is... So that includes C1, C2, and C3 as, as one? No, no, no. That was just C1. Okay, so C2, operational agreement between Winter Haven and the Imperial Police Department. So it's similar to the, the previous item. Uh, this is a renewal of an agreement, an MOU that we have with Woman Haven, who provides victim, victim services for crime victims and domestic violence victims and their children. We're requesting that the MOU, MOU be renewed. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Vote, please. Motion carries 3-0. Okay. Up next, C-3. Ex ex what's that? I said the Aaron show. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and accept the Patrick Leahy Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grant Award. So this is a request for approval of the receiving of $6,012.64 for a Bulletproof Vest Grant. It's a 50% reimbursement grant, and we're using... The previous COPS funding that was approved in May to cover the remaining 50%. So this is to offset some of those additional costs. And we are requesting the permission to receive the funds. How many bulletproof vests does this buy? Excuse me? How many vests does this buy? So it just depends upon which the actual vests are. They they defer or they differentiate in by size no. and wear. So the lar larger folks cost a little bit more. But it... it so anywhere between six and twelve hundred dollars. All right, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Got a motion and a second. Vote, please. Motion carries three zero. All righty. Next up is D reports. Yeah. Ah, uh, good evening. Um, Mr. Mayor and Council yep. Members, um, we are still working uh, with two projects right now, which is 7th, 10th, and uh, 14th Street improvements. Uh, the 7th Street Rehabilitation Project, so besides those two, we are about to start uh, three more, which is the uh, Highway 86 Beautification. The contract is already fully executed, so we are about to start, pro I would say, probably in a couple of weeks, we'll have people doing actual work. Uh, we are going to uh, uh, issue the notice to proceed for the STBG um, 18 rehabilitation project, which spans from Bilore up to all uh, Highway 86, and the CMAC 18 uh, Boulevard Class 2 bike lane. Uh, that goes from uh, Austin, uh, Austin Road up to uh, Bilore. So basically, that area is going to be really uh, uh, modified for the benefit of the uh, the community. So we anticipate to start actual construction uh, within three weeks, because once we get all the contract documents fully executed, uh, it's 10 days uh, to start construction, then mobilization, so expect delays mm -hmm. right. for a little while. All right, you're going to see some streets improvement. So We'll be getting some calls about people not obeying the traffic laws. We'll pass them on to the chief for you. Appreciate you. <laughs> Where are we at on the, the entry, the, the city signs, the entry for the entryways? Um, that is part of, go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, that, that is part of the um, Highway 86 beautification. So, like yeah. So, basically, I, I'm not really involved in the final design. You, you work in the final mm -hmm. design, right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh no! The, yeah, we are working on that. But part of the delay was having the hotel fill in where the uh, the canal was. So okay. we re relocated the sign for where it was proposed to be to the uh, west side of eighty six. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Dale? Um, nothing much more to add other than uh, our the various roads projects is also started. Uh, they started lowering utilities, and uh, we expect paving operations to probably start in about three weeks. All righty. So we are getting some street works done, so be patient with us and don't be honking at the people, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah.
that's illegal too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and parks, I know we got an exciting weekend coming up. Yes, we do. Um, so we have our Fiesta de los Muertos event this Saturday um, from 5 to 9 in downtown Imperial. So we have a lot of fun features for the community that we're very excited about. We'll have live entertainment. We'll have our ofrenda, beer garden, um, family fun zone, um, a lot of fun stuff. So we really encourage the community to come out. And then next Friday, actually, we'll also be having our chunk or treat here at Eager Park. Um, so we encourage if you haven't already, you know, sign up your car and um, pass out some candies to some of the kids in our community. That'll be from 6 to 10 p.m. So got a lot of fun events coming up. All right. Thank you guys very much. IT? Um, only the, the new IT Technician 3 started uh, yesterday, Francisco Alvarez. So if you see him around. Well, All right. <laughs> so that's pretty much the report. All right. Thank you very much. Chief. And so hopefully everybody had the opportunity to read the email that was sent out in reference to the police department survey. We're going to run that from last week. Thank you, IT, for helping us out with that and kind of uh, championing the, the actual technological portion of it. And we're going to be running that to the end of December. Hopefully the information will help the police department develop a strategy based upon public opinion, public concern, quality of life, and crime issues. All right. Thank you. Buyer? Let's do a report. Ready? Finance? Uh, I'm not going to report at this moment. Uh, uh, I'll wait till next month. All right. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> City Attorney? I'm good. Thank you, Thank you very much. Nothing <laughs> 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 from me. City Clerk? Yeah. All right. Then I'll... Adjourn the meeting till November 6, 2024. Thank you, guys.